Hey everyone, this is the Twig ET5. It is a full-blown five-inch drone, uh, but it's really light. It was designed by Racer X FPV as a frame kit, but this is actually the bind and fly version that Beta FPV sells. You can see it's got that Twig frame, but it's got a Beta FPV canopy. So that's why it looks a little bit different, but I'm gonna rip around these trees and show you what this can do. Um, and there's a lot to say about this kind of build. I think this ultralight five inch setup has a lot of potential and I really like this frame. There are definitely things I would change about the bind and fly drone though. So stay tuned for that. As you can see, I had a lot of fun with this drive, but it did take some getting used to. It's way lighter than a typical 5-inch, and it's got way less momentum. That makes it uh, easier to manage in those tight spaces, and it's also a lot quieter, but it doesn't have that momentum to kind of hook over the trees and do some of the freestyle moves that you might be used to doing with 5-inch. Uh, you got to kind of stay on the throttle to do that, uh, but it can be done, and it's surprisingly agile. This is not the default tune. I flashed it with Betaflight 4.2, and I've got RPM filtering, dynamic idle, all the latest bells and whistles of Betaflight. And I did that partially for myself. I just wanted to learn more about those features and get a little more experience tuning them on a craft like this. And so that's what I did. And I think it's flying pretty well, although it's not perfect. You'll see that there are some bobbles, especially when you cut throttle suddenly to zero or pop up from zero throttle, uh, the drone will bobble a little bit. And some of that might be improved with further tuning, but some of it, just comes from the fundamental fact that the props are really large and the motors are really small. Uh, I think they're kind of struggling to manage this size prop, but it's surprising it works as well as it does. In just a minute, I want to show you this drone up close on the bench, but first I'll just be quiet and watch a little bit more of this flight footage and listen to the drone audio. Several of you have told me how much you like hearing that audio, so here it is. Well, we're back at the house now, but that was a lot of fun. And that particular flight lasted for about four minutes in total. If you want to see the rest of it, I'll stick it at the end of this video. But first, let's talk about this drone because I think it's kind of interesting. This bind and fly drone weighs about 170 grams dry weight. So that's a lot heavier than a micro, but it's still categorically lighter than what most people are flying on five inch, but yet it's got those five inch props. And so that's kind of what they're trying to do with this, trying to push a new category. And that's why it was interesting to me. I'm always interested in trying new things, but for me, this is not the first ultralight five inch that I've tried. Some of you might remember this build from earlier on my channel a couple months ago. It was kind of an experiment. This was an earlier version of the X9 five inch frame when it had the 16 by 16 motor mounts. And so you can see I've got 2204 motors on here. Uh, this is much closer to a typical five inch motor. Uh, but as you can see, I took this one apart. I wasn't really satisfied with the performance. And part of the problem was uh, the weight and just this frame had a lot of flex um, and I just couldn't get it flying kind of the way that I wanted. And in that video, I said that there are two directions you could go. Either you could use a stiffer frame, uh, bigger batteries and, and that kind of thing. And that would just sort of push it closer and closer to the kind of known good five inch formula. And so that would be fine. I love those five inch drones, but I was kind of interested in pushing things in the other direction. And that is kind of what we see here. Smaller motors, even lighter, which helps you get away with a smaller battery, which makes it lighter, which helps you get away with the smaller motors. You can kind of, uh, it's a self-reinforcing cycle in either direction. And so this is definitely pushing in the lighter direction. I think we might have actually kind of erred a little bit too far in the other direction though. These motors are really tiny for five inch props. They are 1506, 3000 KV. They're beautiful motors. Uh, they're dual branded Beta FPV and Racer X FPV. Um, and 3000 KV is plenty high. Uh, so it's got that kick, but it just doesn't have the torque to really manage the prop in some of those heavy load situations. Again, I am happily surprised that it works as well as it does, and I'm definitely happier with this build than I was with this old one with the 2204 motors, but 
it is kind of overpropped, and I do think it would be even better with slightly larger motors, especially slightly wider motors. And there are some motors like that now that aren't even necessarily a lot heavier. So let's get this over on the bench. I'll show you some specific things about the Bynafly drone if you're interested in this. And if you want to build one for yourself, I'll tell you what I would do for that as well. And here it is up close. I think it looks pretty cool and the build is nice and clean. It even came with the motor wires bundled up like this, although there's only one zip tie per arm, so the bundles can actually get a little bit crooked. I would definitely recommend using multiple zip ties or a little bit of tape to hold that down. The frame itself is pretty cool and you can see it's got that characteristic twig look with the curved arc in the front and straight in the back and it's got chamfered edges and I want to point out this is a unibody frame meaning it's cut out of a single sheet there's no screws through the arms there's no sandwich plates no bolts that could get loose it's super super simple and the result is a frame that is really stiff uh, that is a good thing it's good for performance and hopefully it will also help with durability of course, if you did break one of these arms, you'd have to replace the whole plate because the arms are not replaceable individually. But hopefully that won't happen because the drone is pretty light, the carbon is four millimeters thick, and it is T700 carbon, which is about as strong as it gets. In the center, you can see the Beta FPV canopy. That is the part that makes this different than the original Racer X kit. Racer X FPV designed 3D printed canopies that look like this. I think these look cooler and you can get them in different colors. You can also get them in different sizes for the split HD cameras or the DJI system or whatever you want to put on there. So the Racer X canopies are going to give you more options and they're definitely going to be a lot more durable than this canopy, but the Beta FPV canopy is lighter, so that's a trade-off. And while we're looking at the canopy, some of you have probably already spotted the problem right here. I only have one antenna. This is the FR Sky version of the drone. There should be a second antenna right here, but that broke off in my very first flight. Uh, when it came in the box, it was down like this so that everything would fit in the box. I lifted it up, of course, but I knew that this was going to be a problem. And so before I even flew, I took the canopy off. I used pliers to hold the bolt that's on the far side of this screw, and I tightened it down as much as I could. And it was pretty stiff, but I couldn't tighten it all the way because that would split the TPU material of this little 3D printed part that's holding it. So I did the best that I could, but in that very first flight, I hit a leaf. It was maybe six or seven feet up and then I tumbled through the grass. And when I went to find it, the tube that was here was cut clean in half. Uh, the tube and the antenna and all. In fact, I think the antenna is still in here. I just kind of tucked it away so it wouldn't get caught in the props. So this antenna is no good. Fortunately, there's another one and I was able to continue flying. So if you get this Bynafly drone or any other beta FPV drone that has this kind of antenna mounting, I would definitely recommend you remount those antennas before you even fly it for the first time. My suggestion would be to take them off of the canopy and use zip ties and a bit of heat shrink on the arms. You can see an example of that on this older build of mine. I've done this on many different builds and it works great. Back to the canopy for a second. You can see that it's mounted here with a little nylon standoff, and this is an M2 screw going to a steel M2 bolt. That is the main support for the canopy. You can see it's on the two sides, but in front there is no bolt on top. Instead, it's just a screw, and the screw goes through the frame and into the plastic of the canopy. And the canopy is only anchored on three points. There is no screw in the back. So that could be a durability concern for the canopy. You could add a screw in the back and a standoff, but I think you would have to drill it out a little bit to make it big enough for an M2 screw. I've done that before though, and I would recommend it if you're using this canopy. The camera in the Bind and Fly is the Cadex Rattel. It's a full-size camera with a full-size glass lens. Uh, the picture quality on this camera is actually really nice. I was impressed with both the resolution and uh, the color clarity on this camera. So it looks great but it is a pretty heavy camera for this kind of build. You could definitely get something lighter in there. If you look in the back, you can see the VTX is inside the canopy, it pokes out just a little bit in the back. This is a triangle shaped VTX, and so it cannot pull out through this hole. That's a good thing, but check out how this antenna is mounted. This stubby little antenna is literally held by nothing but a ring of heat shrink and the UFL connector. That is literally the only thing keeping this little antenna on here. Now the canopy has this notch, which is designed for an antenna to stick into, but I don't know if you can see, but my antenna is just a little bit too short. If I was to push it all the way down into there, it would snap the UFL connector off. So I don't know what's going on with this antenna. I don't know if they're all like this, but it's definitely a problem. I'm probably gonna take a zip tie right around here to help hold down this antenna because that'll give a little bit of tension relief to the UFL connector and it'll angle the antenna a little bit higher, which when you're flying forward is going to give the antenna a better orientation anyway. 
With the canopy off, you can see that the flight controller and the ESC board are two separate boards. It's in a stack. They are held together by rigid header pins in the front and the back. In fact, this flight controller is exactly the same one that came in the original Beta 75X. It was connected with those pins as well. Some of you might remember that. And it's kind of unfortunate because these pins have a tendency to come loose, especially after a number of crashes, and any loose connection between these two boards is gonna knock you out of the air. If I was designing something with a two board stack, then I would definitely want a ribbon of flexible wires to go between the two boards instead of the header pins. Or of course, it could be an all-in-one board and then you just don't have to worry about it. The ESC is pretty interesting though. Uh, they developed this ESC, and as far as I know, this is the only drone that it's in. It is a 6S, uh, 35 amp ESC and it runs BL Heli 32 uh, and it's pretty beefy so the ESC is actually really nice but just because it can take 6s doesn't mean that this drone can. If you plug in a 6s battery you will definitely fry the flight controller because it can only take 4s. A nice thing about this flight controller is that it has an F405 processor and that's significantly faster than the F411s that are used on most of the all-in-ones. Finally, let's talk about these props and motors. I've got one of the motors loose here so you can see it. They look really nice. Build quality seems really nice. They're very notchy. I think these motors are actually designed and manufactured by RC and Power and they make lots of really great motors. And so this is another really great motor. I would consider this to be a fantastic uh, four inch racing motor. I've got some four inch racing drones with 1606. So just a little bit larger than this, but I think the 1506 would work really well for that as well. But it is definitely on the small side if we're talking about five inch motors. You might think five inch is just one inch more than four inch, so it doesn't sound that big, but if you consider the disc area as it's spinning, it's actually an increase of like 50%. Another thing I gotta point out is that this motor has an M5 shaft. And for five inch, I would normally say that that's a really good thing. There's tons of five inch props out there. Pretty much all of the five inch props use this M5 shaft, and so you'd have lots of options. But for a build this light, you really, really need low pitch props, and there's not a lot to choose from. In fact, this 5125 prop from GenFan is pretty much the only prop that I would recommend for this particular drone. So it's kind of ironic, but in this particular case, because of the props that are actually on the market, having an M5 shaft is actually kind of limiting the options. If it had a T-mount, it could still use these props. I've got one right here. It looks like this, but there's a little adapter that you can use for T-mount but you would also have the option of using these HQ props, which are T-mount only. This motor weighs 16.2 grams. If we add the little nut that goes on top, 16.8 grams. Here's another motor that Beta FPV makes. It's an 1805 and it's 2550 kV. So this is a significantly larger motor. Let's get the weight of this. It's 16.15 and if we add some prop screws, 16.6. I have used both of these motors now on different 5 inch drones and I can definitely say that the 1805 has a lot better command over the prop. I like the way that this one flies significantly better than the 1506, but how is it so light? And part of the answer, of course, is the shaft. This shaft is quite a bit of weight and it's just missing here. This has a 1.5 millimeter shaft in the middle. And as far as durability is concerned, that's gonna do nothing. Uh, that is just there to align the prop. The only strength is gonna come from the pair of steel M2 screws that you put in there. Uh, how well that's gonna do for durability, I don't know. I haven't actually broken any of these motors yet, so it's kind of an unanswered question. But there's another thing to consider for durability. Look on the other side. This is a two millimeter shaft going all the way through the motor. So the thing that it actually spins on is just two millimeters. If you get a hit to this bell, it only takes a fraction of a millimeter deformation to throw it off balance or to scrape on these magnets. And so this just does not look like a very durable motor to me, but it is super light and it is a great size for this ultralight five inch class. There's another size motor that I also think would be really interesting to try on this weight class, but I haven't tried it yet, and that is 2004. Uh, there is a Brother Hobby motor, and it looks like this. I haven't used it yet, so I can't recommend it, but if any of you have used that motor on an ultralight 5-inch, please let us know down in the description below. What do you think of that size on a setup like this? It's nice that bind and fly options exist, but I think you could do even better if you built it yourself, 
So that's what I would do, that's what I would suggest. So you could get the frame in a kit, and then you could put whatever components you want on it. For myself, I think I would want to try one of those motors with a little bit wider stator. I would want an all-in-one flight controller and a nano camera, and for the canopy, I would go with the original Racer X canopy. This thing is super tough. It anchors in four points. I would use titanium M3 screws for that. They're gonna go all the way through the frame. It's gonna be really rugged. A nice bonus is that the canopy is large enough for the capacitor. So I would take it off of the power lead and attach it directly to the VBAT pads on the flight controller. That's gonna be better electronically and it keeps it out of the way. I know for some of you getting the all up weight to be less than 250 grams is a requirement because of regulations in your area. And unfortunately, if you use an 850 4S battery like Beta FPV provides, uh, that is gonna push it over. Like I said, it's about uh, 268 grams. So you'd have to save quite a few grams to get it under that threshold. Of course, you could use a smaller battery and that would definitely do it, but there are other things that you could do to save weight if you're looking to do that. I know some people have tried the 1505 motors with the two blade prop. Uh, you could definitely use a lighter camera. You could definitely use an all-in-one flight controller board. And even this pigtail, you could save a bunch of weight. This is 16 gauge wire, which is actually pretty heavy. And the reason it's so long is because they expect that you'll mount the battery this way with the quartz coming out the front of the drone, and then you kind of wrap around like that. That makes it pretty easy to plug in, but you've got a lot of cord going around on the side. When you set it down, it often tips over because of the wires. I just don't like running the wires that way. So I would shorten this up, have a nice short lead here, maybe have it go to the side so you can zip tie it to an arm and then just have the power lead go that way. That would actually save a few grams just in the wire. Well, I think that about does it for the ET5. Thanks for watching. I hope this is interesting and helpful for you. If it is, if you like this sort of thing, then consider hitting that subscribe button and the like button that helps more people see this kind of content. And stay tuned because I've got more content coming. I don't know if you can see, but there is an X Knight 5, the new X Knight 5, uh, buying and fly drone on the wall back there. I'll be telling you about that soon. And I've got a bunch of other projects. So stay tuned. Have fun flying. I'll see you next time.